Hello everyone, today I'll be looking at some physical hardware, the Delon Clip, which you can use with head tracking software. This allows you to look around hands-free in simulator games like IL-2 or Arma 3, and many other flying, racing, first-person games. This is a much less expensive alternative to Track IR, which seems to have cornered the market and priced their product accordingly. That is to say, it's very expensive, probably about three times the price of the Delon Clip I review here. I want to thank the folks at Dell & Clip for providing me with their product for review. But that said, I've been given carte blanche to review the product however I feel. So I can even start off right away by saying that there is another product similar to Dell & Clip, which is TrackHat, and I think that those are both strong competitors for a low-cost alternative to TrackIR. While I haven't used TrackIR myself, fellow YouTuber Wolfpack345 and I were frequently discussing the pros and cons of each, and I'll share some of my final thoughts about that at the end of the video. Now you can see here an outline for the video with timestamps. I'll start with a tongue-in-cheek unboxing before moving on to the physical setup by mounting the Dell & Clip on headphones. Then I'll go through the software setup for both Facetrack Noir and OpenTrack, and I'll take the OpenTrack setup into a game to showcase the Dell & Clip's functionality. At that point, I'll conclude by briefly discussing the merits of the various head tracking hardware out there. So without further ado, let's get to this unboxing business. Aha! Uh -huh. The Dellen Clip has finally arrived at Tortuga's house. The only question that remains is how to open it, how to do an unboxing without doing a face reveal. Oh, I have my ways. The only information you guys get is what kind of oven mitts I like. Now, let's see what's inside of this. We have one PS3 camera. We have one PS3 monitored clip. This will attach the camera to our monitor. Ah, uh, there it is, the Dellum clip itself with the uh, four adhesive pads. Let's take a look at the other side. Let's take a look at the other side in a moment. Ah, uh, the other side of the Dellum clip with the Three LEDs. Isn't she a beauty? Now the Dell Clip comes with this uh, four pack of Velcro. Uh, I forget what they call this, like hook and key or something like that. So we're just gonna take one of these off and we're gonna put it on the wire side facing obviously upward. Uh, and that's gonna attach to our headphones. Okay, so that is now done. And we're gonna put the opposite end on the cheap Sennheiser headphones I have that I'm going to be using uh, at least to start. But hey, I mean, we have more pads. We can put it on another headphone later. So uh, where you want to put this, I guess, is like two to three, probably around three inches above your ear. Um, and this is just following the video. I'll probably put a screenshot on here. Um, just follow the video from Dell and Clit themselves. They've done a really good job. I'm going to go do that and then show you the result. Okay, so we now have the Velcro strip on both sides. They do partner together. The last thing I want to do is I want to attach this to my headset because it's going to be out to a, the side. And this, although it's stainless steel, is um, it's pliable. We can actually bend it. And we're going to bend it so that this uh, Dell clip is vertical. I'll show that in a sec. So I did this um, bending out and then bending back in S-curve. That's the same way that they did it on the Dell clip tutorial. Um, and now you can see it's it's probably about straight and I'll you know bend it a little bit more as I as I need when it's on well, That's going to conclude the physical setup part of this uh, Tutorial your Dell and clip should look more or less like this attached to the headset We're not going to worry about the fine-tuned adjustments Those are only relevant once we actually get the camera set up and we can see what the dots look like on the head tracking software so let's get the software set up, and that's what this next part of the tutorial will be to help you to do. Uh, a note about this, we'll be using the Dell & Clip website as a backdrop. We'll be using the manual. Um, that website is dellenengineering.com, or you can just Google Dell & Clip and Google. Uh, but I also want to say that this website, some websites you go to and you feel like people just did the minimum not to scare people away, or that you know it's a little bit robotic or something. I feel like this website has a lot of effort put into that, and we'll see that a lot inside the manual. Like, um, I mean, just a one example camera setup, if I want to know what tracking software to use, 
they have a nice description of the various ones out there. Um, but we're going to start with the downloads. So even though I don't think, even in that list it says Face Track Noir, I think that Open Track is actually going to be the best one overall. I'll still go through the tutorial of Face Track Noir because it's done in this tutorial. It's recommended by Dell and Clip itself. But I use Open Track for IL2. Um, so this is in the future and I have it all up and running and I have it running with IL2. So I have to say that Open Track is, it, it just feels better. There's a lot of features that are in it that are not in at least the version 1.7 of Face Track Noir. But again, feel free to download it. The download for Face Track Noir is gated by a password that you are sent when you, with your shipping order basically. So see your shipping confirmation email for the password. That's also true of something else I forget, but anyway, so download these uh, and then we'll start getting into the camera setup next. At this point, I'm gonna assume you have the software all downloaded onto your computer. Should be a list like this. This CLI driver is what we'll be using, at least most people will be using to install the driver for the PS3 i camera, which is the one that seems like almost everyone recommends. Um, Dell and Clip is nice enough to leave a list of other recommended cameras for you just in case you aren't getting, most people will be getting the PS3 i camera with the Dell and Clip full package. But just in case you wanna buy the clip alone, you can get uh, your own camera. It's really nice to see that they do that. Now, so the steps should be, install the driver, restart your computer, plug in the camera, and then we'll run CLI test. First, install the driver. Second, plug in the camera. Third, run CLI test. Fourth, make sure your Dell and Clip is on and plugged in. And you should have something like this. Most important option for us to change right now. Don't worry about being centered. Uh, you'll get to that eventually. But the important thing is to video capture settings. So these are my settings. You can probably just duplicate them if you want. Um, you want the gain pretty high. Obviously, if the gain is too high, I don't know if you can see it, but it's almost picking up a third dot there. Um, too low, obviously, it's not going to be able to detect these white dots versus the background. Probably it's better to err on the side of too big, and you'll notice this more only once we're running the Face Track Noir software. Exposure, most likely, you're going to want very low, very low, because this is even worse with than gain. If you open it too much, you're going to get definitely some false positives. So de definitely best to keep this low. It's probably better to lower the exposure and raise the gain as a, a remedy if you think the dots are too low. I mean, uh, too little or not bright enough. White balance, I don't really have advice to offer. This is just what I got by tweaking with it. And this is maybe, I'm not even comfortable saying this is the optimum, but you can try this and if it works for you, it worked for me and everyone's set. Moving on to Face Track Noir, I'm going to assume that you already have it installed. There is one little modification to the installation that uh, Dell and Clip advises you to make. I'll just show you that here. So you should have the three files that you've gotten from them. This one is the installation file. You've already done that. That's the one you need the password to download. Uh, these other two things, not a big deal. If you go to C, Program Files x86, Abercrookie Inc, you see Face Track Noir. Open that. The Update to the supported games goes into settings, paste there, I'm not gonna do it. And the update to the actual driver, this is much more important. Um, this one is like 2013, just in case you wanna see, but this is the more important one, the driver. We're gonna, and now I obviously have already done this as well, so I'm gonna skip this as well, but that's important to do. So we'll skip that, we're done with that, and it's time to actually use Face Direct Noir. So make sure CLI test is closed because you need it to be closed to run Face Track Noir. Open Face Track Noir, and let's get started with this. Game protocol, it's Face Track 2.0 for like everything. They have a game list here, but as you can see, for pretty much every game, it's just Face Track 20. So that shouldn't be a very difficult decision. Then the next thing we want to do is change the tracker source to Point Tracker 1.1. This is very important. Uh, then the settings here. I mean, I guess we'll run it. So the important button for you, if you want to actually have this tracked in your game, like in IL-2 or in your flight simulator, you have to hit go. We'll hit start. And this is actually the camera reporting those dots, that white thing we saw in CLI test. It's being reported now to Face Track Noir. So now if I look right, it shows me looking right. If I look left, it shows me looking left. If I look up, it shows me looking up. Etc. If I move forward, it should show me moving forward. I, I may have turned off the Z translation. 
because uh, I don't really like it. But uh, all that stuff should be working for you too. If not, you may need to adjust. So one of the important things is, are you getting exactly three extracted points? And the best way of fixing that is by playing with the point extraction here under camera. Um, for example, if you're getting four points and the two of them are really close together, I recommend that you just increase your minimum diameter. I am not getting that situation, but uh, this just means that the if you have a dot, if a sensor here, the minimum distance that another point can be picked up is two pixels away. But I could set it to 10 and it works. Now note if I set it to 20, nothing is being reported at all because none of these pixels are bigger than 20 themselves. <laughs> so. If you have a small little dot somewhere getting picked up as a point, if you make this uh, minimum diameter big enough, you'll get rid of that. So you just can play around with these until you get three extracted points at pretty much all times. One other thing that I don't want to go into too much here is the curves. Um, this allows you to play with how, what exactly your movement in real life translates to in game. Let's take a simple example, pitch up. When I look up 20 degrees, that translates to a 75 degree, uh, like looking up in game. Now, maybe I think that's too much. I don't want to look up to 20 degrees. I can just move this so that now 20 degrees is going to correspond to 140 degrees. Now I'm looking up 20 degrees and that corresponds to my head, like snapping behind me somehow. Anyways, most games limit this to 90 degrees anyways for pitch up. It's probably more important for things like yaw. If I look to the left, I'm looking to the left 25 degrees and that corresponds to a 90 degree. Well, I may want that to be uh, slightly larger. Or you can set up multiple points by clicking again and again and then just dragging them. You can have some weird thing, this doesn't make any sense at all, where if I look far enough to the left, it actually starts looking back to the right in game. But you can set it up that way. Hopefully you'll just get a feel for this. Uh, the best way of doing this, by the way, is to have the game up and to be alt tabbing back and forth and adjusting this and seeing how it affects uh, your performance in game. So at this point we should be all good to go with Face Track Noir. Uh, if you have any lingering questions about point tracker settings, every single input field is covered on the website. They do, again, they're just doing a very good job of tutorializing everything. There's also a demo that they offer you to try out. I'm going to skip that and jump right to IL2. So we're going to go down to the very bottom and look at the game setup section. Click on that, scroll to the bottom, and there's IL2. Here's your link to download OpenTrack Stable. A note that the manual um, link also has this alternative for setting up OpenTrack. This links to the IL2 forum where there's a very detailed and thorough post about how to set up OpenTrack. Now I never looked at that, so you may not need to either. Once OpenTrack is installed, Importantly, what we want to do is basically somebody else um, on YouTube created a nice video about Dell and Clip and using it with OpenTrack for IL2. The only thing that I really needed from them is this configuration file. So when you open OpenTrack, there's this profile area. And what you want to do is download someone else's, I guess this is common practice, to get someone else who has already done all the configurations and load theirs. So if you do that open configuration directory or whatever, config, yeah, then you drop, just paste that configuration file in there and select it from the profiles. Now this, at this point, you should be, you should have a, a working profile with IL2, at least that's how it worked for me. Um, I also want to mention that one of the best things about OpenTrack compared to FaceTrack Noir is they have a much better mapping properties area, um, but this is best to adjust, as I've said, when you're actually in the game. So let's jump into IL2 and see how it all works out. We are now in game. Just thought I'd show you that OpenTrack is still up and it's given us some values. One of the things that I wanted to talk about a little bit more specifically as well is how important the mapping screen is and adjusting this. And this is just going to be something which you keep adjusting like for so long. I feel like it's just been a constant journey of, you know, <laughs> advancing on this. Uh, it seems like every time you make some changes, you go back in game and then you realize, you know what, there's something else that I, I think I should be doing. And then you fix that and it, the cycle just goes on and on and on. So you'll be spending a lot of time in the mapping settings. I'm gonna kind of, I don't use roll, but I'm gonna kind of scroll through my settings here. And if you wanna just use them as a baseline, uh, feel free to do that. 
I don't, I had some trouble with the Y, but, uh, and I, I also disabled Z. If I go in game, this is what it's actually corresponding to. So you can see I'm turning my head all the way around. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit so it's a little more obvious where I'm looking. And then let's turn back and turn to the right. Let's look down at that wing. Maybe we'll look down at our feet and can see the flight stick monitoring, doing what I want. Uh, I can press the brakes. We can, you know, zoom in a little bit. I'm not using the Z, so I'm actually zooming in with a, a button on my joystick, or actually on my throttle. But uh, it's it's nice to be able to look around, and importantly, it's going to help us actually track where people are in the air around us. So let me just give you my final thoughts on everything. We'll just take a lap around. There's a lot of torque in this thing. So now that I've kind of done this overview and everything, and I've spent a lot of time using the Dell Clip, I first want to say that I think head tracking hardware, um, I would describe it as this. It's gonna take a long time to get used to, but it's worth it if you can put in, if you feel you can put in the time. And the time I would say, I'm not joking when I say this number, it's probably about five hours. I would say it's about five hours of time where you're constantly fiddling with settings, but it's probably two hours to get comfortable and five hours to be like very efficient. So probably around the two hour mark, you're a little bit better already than using, so I mean, I, I didn't do this for the takeoff, but we can like climb up or we can, you know, eh, we're taking shots, maybe we sink down. <laughs> I, don't, I don't sink down very often. Look left, I didn't do this, but we probably should have opened the canopy and looked out the window. We can actually see the, how lean the mixture is based on the color of the flames on our engine. Um, a couple other notes. Uh, I think that the hat might actually be better than the clip. That's just based on Wolfpack's feedback. We've talked a lot about these things. He's very happy with the hat. I've come to notice a few issues with the clip, or really, really minor ones. Um, for example, the camera is uh, like at the top of my head, as far as height, altitude, whatever. But the clip is uh, on the side of my head, which means that they're not perfectly aligned in space. So it, with the hat, it would, the camera sensor would be at the top of my head, and I feel like that would actually be better. Uh, anyway, but that's a minor thing. I just feel like that miss. That's why I don't have the Z-axis enabled for that exact reason. That I feel like it's not catching uh, the forward and backward movement as it, it sees it as up and down, which makes sense. For I'm not going to go into the reasons here, but it makes sense. Um, otherwise, track IR versus Delm Clip or track hat, I think that there's, it's just a, a simple game of if you want to pay a lot less, you're going to have to put a little bit more effort in on the setup. I would say that the, probably it's, you know, I mean with the tutorial and setup and everything I have here, you'll probably be in better shape, but it's still going to be, uh, you have to be able to invest that time, and for people who you know, have the money and may not want to invest the time, then you, your best option may still be Track IR. The, the, the Dell and Clip and Track Hat are like low cost alternatives to Track IR. That's exactly how I describe them. Now, the other thing to consider is that Track IR does have a higher frame rate or refresh rate, the camera. So, from that perspective, you actually have a slightly, like, the, it records the camera movements a little bit better. And uh, that's something to consider, you know. Well, my final thoughts are I do recommend Dell and Clip. It works for me, although I can't say how much better or worse it is than Track Hat or Track IR. But as the least expensive of the three, that makes it a good low cost option. Feel free to leave your own comments or opinions in the comment section below. And I'll try to point Tomas from Dell and Clip over to this video. But your best bet for technical questions is to contact them directly. I'll have a link to their website in the video description. And I'll pin a comment with that as well. I can just say that it works. <laughs> that's how I got in touch with them. So feel free to contact them through that. And that's going to wrap this video up. So thanks for watching. Fly safe and good hunting.